Welcome to June's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is Stone Game 7. Alice and Bob take turns playing a game with Alice starting first. There are n stones arranged in a row. On each player's turn, they can remove either the leftmost stone or the rightmost stone from the row and receive points equal to the sum of the remaining stone's value in the row. The winner is the one with the higher score when there are no stones left to remove. Now, Bob found out that he will always lose the game, uh, so he decided to minimize the score's difference. Alice's goal is to maximize the difference in the score. Really, that's a red herring, though, because doesn't really matter that Bob is always going to lose the game. They're both trying to just play optimally and uh, maximize the score's difference, right? Like, okay, he's trying to minimize it, but essentially he, that means that just means he's trying to, because he's the loser, he's just trying to still maximize. Okay, now given an array of integers, stones, where stone's i represents the value of i stone from the left, we turn the difference in Alice and Bob's score if they both play optimally. So that's kind of the key here. We want to return the, what, uh, the difference that will occur if, they, if they're both playing optimally. Okay, so we can kind of intuit just from this question that this is going to be a recursion, recursive solution, uh, probably a dynamic program solution built on top of that. And they tell you that straight up in the hints. The constraints are small enough so that we can have an n squared solution and also use dynamic programming. So let's begin by thinking about how we might do this if we want to do it recursively. Uh, say that we had an array like this. We can begin by writing some sort of helper function that keeps track of the start and ends, right? So this would be i and this would be j. Now, uh, what we would do then is find the sum of this array and we want to subtract um, the minimum between the two stones that we can remove as well as the path that we can go, uh, everything that remains from the path onward. So like two paths we can go on from here would be like, we had start with i and j, we would go to either i plus 1 to j, or we would go to i to j minus 1, uh, depending on, so what, whatever gets returned here in our recursion, we kind of have to add that. So if we said, okay, we're going to choose j, it would be like j plus whatever recursively gets recalled here, or plus i, say i plus uh, i plus 1 to j, like that. So let's see if we want to do just a simple recursion we would say first calculate n <clears throat> let's write our helper method i'll call it recursion and i and j is going to be our parameters so basically we're uh, we're going top down here we're going to start with the entire array and kind of build down uh, making this, making this into sub problems so the base case if i is greater than j that means you know we're out of our array so return zero now, otherwise, we want to return, first find the total, which is going to be the sum of stones to from i to j, and we need a plus one here to include it. And we want to just return total minus the minimum between, if we chose stones i, uh, we're going to add that to the recursion of i plus one j. And we'll do the same thing on the other side, stones j plus recursively call uh, i to j minus 1. Now if we just call this and say return recursion of 0 to n minus 1, uh, this should actually work. Let's see. And it does work, but it's going to reach a time limit ex exception uh, because we're not memoizing. So we'll be doing a lot of um, repetitive calls. And this calculating of sum keeps taking n. So this actually ends up becoming more than uh, n squared. Uh, one way we can avoid that is to create some sort of accumulation uh, sum, sum accumulation array. So what I can do is uh, say accumulate stones, uh, reconvert this to a list. I also need a 0 in the beginning. And instead of calculating a sum like this, all we have to do is say, all right, get the sum of j, uh, let's see, j plus 1 minus sum of i, I believe. And that should work as well. Make sure that does. Okay, so uh, this will, I, I would submit this, but even when I mem memoize, it actually is, uh, too slow, it reaches that time limit exception, which is weird because 
it's technically n squared if I memoize that is. So uh, one way you could avoid doing that is, or pass it is like entering some value inside the L LRU cache, and that actually does allow it to pass. Uh, but it's hard for me to, to like really figure out why this is, because when I do just a manual memoization, it doesn't work. So you can see it does get accepted, but I wouldn't recommend this just because it's just like unstable. So we know that there's probably a dy dynamic programming solution since there's this recursive solution, right? But how could we do that? Um, and this is where it gets really difficult. Let's just think as simple as possible and say that we had an array with values one, two, three, and four. And we're probably gonna have to have a 2D array. And what this represents right here, uh, these represent the I, the starting point, while these represent the, aiding, um, the ending point. Okay, so this is all J, this is all one. And these are the actual values, just for simpli simplicity's sake. That's what I'm gonna do. And in this value right here in the DP, the DP array, we're trying to keep track of the max differences that we're trying to accumulate. And because this is dynamic programming, we need to go bottom up, right? And how would we do that? Well, the big issue here is that we're trying to select from the beginning and we're trying to select from the end. So that kind of makes it a little tricky that we can't just like uh, search up or search right before. What we have to do here is um, we're going to start at the starting number of three right here with the ending value of J. Okay, so, uh, so right now everything's just zero. And we're going to start at this point right here. So remember, this is the I and this is the J. So essentially what we're trying to ask is, what is the maximum difference that we could uh, give on to our opponents from before? So say we had three and four, obviously we, we want to select three, right? And what's that going to mean? That means that uh, whatever remains is going to be the value that um, is going to be the difference for, for the next opponent, right? Uh, so here, say that we take the sum of our, of our uh, subarray, that would be seven, and we want to subtract um, e either side, e either three, okay? And if we subtract three, that means we need to subtract whatever is difference remaining from uh, before with whatever is remaining. So that would be four and four remaining, so that'd be like bottom here. If we subtract four, however, then we want to figure out, okay, what's the difference coming from three? And at that point, those are both zeros because there's just one value left. But um, right here with three and four, we want to remove three. So that means four is remaining. So there we go. We're going to remain four there. Okay, so now let's go with two to three. Now with two to three, it's kind of the same thing. Like here, it's going to start off with zero. And uh, with two to three, we want to remove two which means three is going to remain, right? And now what happens here? Well, two, three, four. Okay, so the sum of this subarray is going to be nine. Uh, do we want to remove four? And uh, if we remove four, that means whatever remains from this side is going to be what remains. And we're, we're, at this point, we're trying to maximize the difference, right, for each opponent. So... Uh, it either be 9 minus 4 minus 3, minus 4, so that would be 2, or it would be 9 minus 2, 7 minus 4, so that would mean, remain with 3. Okay, so finally with the last, uh, the first row here, let's see, 1 and 2, uh, what remains? 1 and 2, we want to... Uh, remove one, so what remains just two. And with here, one, two, three, let's see, five, six, minus two, so three, wait, 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 five, six, minus two, so I'd be zero, uh, or five minus one, minus two, minus two, which is also two, uh, and finally, one, two, three, four. We're trying to decide, okay, do we want to remove one? So this is 10 minus 
1, 9 uh, minus 3, that's going to be 6, or 10 minus 4, which is 6, minus 2, which is 2. So obviously we want to go the other way, so that's going to be a 6. Okay, so that is really tricky, right? Because uh, normally we're, we usually look like either up or, or, or left, but this time we're kind of be, we have to look to uh, the, the uh, each direction. We're going to be looking backwards like here, and we're going to be looking forwards. Like we're doing I plus 1 whenever we make our decision. Okay, so I'm confusing myself as I do this, but let's just begin. Let's first create our DP array, which is going to be start with n length of stones. And we're going to create a DP array, which all begins with zeros times n and for blank in range of n. Okay, so now we want to do our iteration for i, but we're going to do this backwards. Like I said, we're going backwards here for i in range of n minus 2, because we're starting on this uh, second to last row here, and we're going to go backwards all the way. And we're going to say for j in range, we only care about what comes to the right. So i uh, plus 1, because we don't want to include itself all the way to n. So at first, we're going to accum like accumulate the total here. Uh, total will start off with just being stones of i, and each column that we go total now equals plus equals stones of j. Okay, so now our DP array, DP of i, j, we are going to try to calculate the max between total minus either we take the stones i, and then we'll subtract the dp of i plus 1 to j. Or it's the other way, total minus stones of j minus dp of i and j minus 1. Finally, we just return our dp of the very the very first row, the last number here that exists, so that'd be negative 1. Uh, so let me sh make sure I got this right. Okay, it looks like I did, so let's submit that. Okay, there we go, that's accepted. So this is, would be a n squared time complexity with n squared space. Now you could save some space by uh, making this just uh, a previous and current array, uh, because essentially all we're looking at is the, the current array and the previous one that comes from before. And you can save some space doing that, uh, but I don't know if it's worth it. Okay, so yeah, this is the solution. I did not come up with this. This was a hard one for me. Um, even the recursive solution, I thought I got, but it was much more complicated than I, I initially thought because of finding this difference. So, yeah, it's, you know, sometimes you have these questions that you know, like, what the approach is, but it's just really hard to get it down. I mean, hopefully this helps. I hope to solve more questions like this because there's really no end to these, you know, tricky recursion problems. All right, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.